Today we're talking about tricks to rank up in Conquest Leagues. Now first of all, I am not the highest placed in rank, just to make that clear beforehand. I don't know, a lot of people think that I'm masters or something like that, I am not. Just saying that before we get into these tips, so if you think that I'm not qualified to give you any kind of advice on this topic, that's more than fair in my opinion. But I have been asked multiple times to make a video on that topic and I did grind a fair bit from the low silver divisions into the gold divisions and then didn't play rank for quite a while again, but yeah, we'll just go into all the tricks that I've learned, all the advice that I can give you, especially get out of the lowest ranks, and uh, hopefully that will help you. Now the first and probably most obvious tip I can give you is keep grinding. A lot of your ranked placement is down to playing a lot of games, so you can actually be placed in a division that's appropriate for you and the system takes a long time to actually place you there. And with the new changes to the placement system, it will change over again and you may be able to skip divisions that you weren't able to skip before and stuff like that. So playing a lot will give the system a more approximate level of skill that you have, a more exact number on that, and that way you will be able to play against more equal opponents. Now this doesn't work out half as well as it should because there's still masters, grandmasters players being placed with whatever, silver players and stuff like that, but still you will get better matches than if you're still in your 10 qualifiers or stuff like that. So if you want to rank up, that is your number one tip. Just play a lot, as frustrating as this can be from time to time. In the same sense, while you should obviously be in a ranked mindset, you should not wind yourself up too much about one single loss. Just keep on going. The more games you play, the less significant that one loss will be. So the more time, the more games you invest into it in that regard, the less it should affect you. And if you play leagues a lot, you will be more casual towards how the games are. If you're just in your first few leagues games, you're going to take them dead serious and you're going to be like, okay, I have to try out as much as possible. And losing is going to be a lot more frustrating because of that. The moment you play ranked a lot, it's becoming more of a secondary casual conquest with bans, which then will allow you to have a more relaxed mindset about it and not phase too much about a single loss. Talking about a single loss, that brings us to point number two. Do not immediately requeue when you're really salty, an advice that I should probably take a lot more. Take a quick break, play a casual mode, play another game, just do something else for 10 minutes, whatever works best for you, but don't jump into the next queue right after losing a game and being annoyed with your teammates and being upset because that way you will go into the new game with a negative mindset you will potentially still think about the last game in lobby instead of focusing on the picks you will still think about the last game while in game you will be angry and easily blame mistakes on your allies instead of just focusing on winning the game and stuff like that so if you take a quick break and let that anger pass first if you have that kind of anger in the first place then it will help you win a lot more games in the long run as you're more focused on the game. Point number three, bring a friend. Dual queuing can sometimes mess up your matchmaking, so you should look for someone who's actually around your division, around the same elo, which is hard to find out, to be honest, but you will get a decent feeling for it. In the end, it makes ranked a lot more relaxed experience, from what I can tell, though. You will have someone to communicate with that you can rely on, you will have someone where you know that they will play their game decently most of the time, and you will have generally just some casual talk in between that eases up the whole atmosphere of trying to grind through that stuff. So I think it makes it a lot more entertaining, even though it can sometimes be a bit of a downside as well. Overall, I think it's still a lot more beneficial to dual queue than solo queue, even though the matchmaking in solo queue is sometimes better, which if you want the best matchmaking possible for you, means you should still go for solo queue. Number four, rewatch or spectate, if possible, your games. Now, if you have some kind of recording software, maybe like Shadowplay or OBS or something like that, or you're able to get some replays of your own games by somebody else spectating you, you should take advantage of that. I know this is not for everyone, but when you can do it, you can really see, especially in those games where you lost, where the problems were. In hindsight, there's a lot of things that you can really judge better and tell how you could have played, reacted differently, where you made mistakes, missed out on wards or stuff like that, something you can't even see on the map before. And just generally see the process of the game and where your biggest flaws are. This can drastically help you improve and in the process of that you're obviously going to rank up faster as well. Number five, get rid of distractions. This is not necessarily important for everyone, but for a lot of people. A lot of people don't make sure that they have the time to play rank before queuing 
or may have something that irritates them in the background, whatever. All of this is going to have a toll on your performance, and not only that, it's even worse if you have to leave the game, because then obviously you're going to rank down a lot faster. Have a stable connection. If you don't have a stable connection, probably just don't queue ranked. I know it's frustrating that you depend on that connection, which may be a problem on Hyrus end in the end, but you're not going to fuck yourself over, but everyone else as well, for no good reason. You're not going to get any benefit if you frequently lose games due to disconnecting because of a poor connection, stuff like that. So make sure when you start, you have the time to play that ranked round and you have the room not to get distracted by anyone or anything else around you by having to do anything in the household or stuff like that. Just make sure it's done before so that doesn't take anything from you. Number six, be confident in all roles. If you play ranked a lot, you will have to play every single role at some point. At that point, you should be able to play that role. If you only play three roles and you cannot, for the love of God, play any gods in the other role, you're probably going to lose some games just because you can't play any of the gods. If you're able to just play a few gods in every role to a decent level, I don't say, I'm not saying you should be perfect with every single one of them, but just to a decent level, it will greatly help you in ranked because you will often get stuck in roles that are not your main role. Number seven, and this one is especially true for lower divisions. Play gods that can A, hyper carry or B, split push. <laughs> I'm definitely not a fan of split push, but at lower levels of play, it's just sometimes necessary. If you have a team full of people that are too incompetent to turn the game in any way, then split pushing may be your only option and it's the only thing you can do on your own. But Stet has a really high potential on low levels of play, simply because people can't really counterplay her split push potential. Now obviously this is a fair bit of a dick move, but if you want to win, you have to sometimes take drastic measures. And if your team is not showing up, which they frequently don't, especially in divisions like bronze, silver and gold, then you may have just up to drastic measures and go for the split push quite often. And in the same sense, you should probably pick guys that can consistently get you through the game. For example, if you're playing mid, then you should maybe pick someone like Sol or Kronos, somebody who can hyper carry as an AA guard despite of being a mid mage in that sense. So you can get, get on structures as well and you can secure objectives easily and stuff like that. Same going for support, play support that can play aggressive to some extent at least, like for example Bakos or Fafnir, just so you have some more potential if your team doesn't really go for kills and you need to do more than just set up. ADCs have an easy time here, but once again there's also the solo lane where you really depend on your team to emphasize on the actions you do, so as such if you're for example playing Raven, you can probably bully in lane quite a lot and you can probably get some structures on your own relatively early, whereas a more team dependent character like Guan Yu, as great as he would be in theory, will not work as well on lower levels unless the team really sticks together and makes him work. Meanwhile, even oddball picks like Bakasura solo can easily split push the whole game, and if you are able to win lane with Bakasura, then in the end that might actually help, especially in low divisions once again. Point number eight, once again one that I should pay a lot more attention to myself. Don't compare yourself to the others on your team. You don't want to measure yourself with the performance of people who may actually be in much lower ranks than you are. Just look for your own mistakes, don't look for theirs. It will help you in the end if you just try to improve on yourself as much as you can, see how you can make things work for you even if things are not going favorable for your team and I know this is very, very hard and I still struggle with that to this day, which is probably a big part of the reason why I'm not ranking up. But if you are able to look past the other, mis other mistakes, focus on your own and that way try to improve, you will do a lot better. Point number nine, if possible, be accommodating in bands and picks. Sometimes you will end up with people that can literally just play one role. And that sucks, and they should not be playing ranked, we know that, but in the end there's not much we can do about it except for, well, accepting it. And what I think can help you in that regard is being like, okay, he wants to play my main role, I have a secondary role that I'm nearly as good on, let him play the main role, offer him the main role, as long as you get the secondary role, in order to have a higher chance of winning. This is one of the most frustrating things to do, especially when that person then underperforms in your best role. But it can often help if they are just in a role that they can play decently while not being good in any other role and you can play a role where you're also performing well enough to help the team. Number 10, and that's the last one, 
Don't pick gods just because they're high tier. Many people think they should pick the highest tier gods at all times and then perform horribly with them and therefore basically just lose elo due to picking high tier gods. Pick gods that you're good on, pick gods that you can perform well on and that way you will have a much higher chance of actually winning the game and progressing in ranked. These are 10 tips that can help you to get better at ranked. There are obviously a few more. I did not include everything that can be said about this. I might just, you know, make another part at some point down the road where I will cover more of these. For now, thank you guys for watching. New video tomorrow. Yuxloth, out.